Hello, hello everyone. My name is Laura. This is my channel, Laura's Little Library. In case you haven't seen, I have COVID. So I'm not feeling super great, um, which is why you will not have near as many videos. But if you want more of an explanation and a bookish update, click on that video. But I am going to be doing a COVID quarantine reading block. So I have two weeks where I'm not allowed to leave the apartment. In fact, I'm trying everything I can to not leave this room because we do have a roommate who is not showing symptoms. Um, so we are trying to do our best to quarantine separately. So I will be in this room for the next two weeks minus bathroom and meal breaks. So that could potentially lead to a lot of reading. Again, as I mentioned, some sometimes I have energy and sometimes I don't, but I can still listen to audiobooks and I can still physically read if I have the energy. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to see what two weeks off due to COVID will do to my reading life. So this is the start of that vlog. I will say, I have energy now, but I've actually been watching booktube. I've been catching up on a lot of booktube videos, and so I don't know if I'm going to keep doing that or if I'm actually going to start reading. I'm currently reading The Nature of Witches physically, and then I am listening to the audiobook for The Prisoner's Wife. And for The Prisoner's Wife, I am three hours in to the 13 hour audiobook, so I'm still quite near the beginning. Um, a lot has happened to just kind of set up the book. This book is about a Czech farm girl who meets this Englishman who is a prisoner of war and they decide to get married and run away together. Uh, but in order to uh, prevent her, in order for her safety, I believe they dress her up like a boy. And I think they get thrown into a concentration camp together. Um, and they manage to stay together because they dress her up as a boy. Um, but yeah, so that's my audiobook. And then Nature of Witches is a book where the, the witches' magic are based on the seasons. Um, so there are spring witches, summer witches, autumn witches, and winter witches. Uh, which I think is a great book to read for right now as we are in the changing of seasons. Um, but we are following our main character who is an ever witch, which means she's not actually tied to a season, but she is struggling learning how to use her magic. Oh my goodness, is she struggling? Um, so those are the two books that I am reading. I am two thirds of the way into The Nature of Witches, so I feel like if I have a good reading binge, I can finish that or at least come really close to. But yeah, I make no promises. I'm just gonna film this video and see how it goes. And if it's good enough, it will be posted. If not, then you'll never see it. So yeah, it is, geez, what time is it? It's 4.30 on Tuesday. I am, it's a day two of my quarantine, but it's day either three or four of having symptoms. So we'll see. Like, everybody says, you know, two weeks and then you should be good. Well, we'll see when two weeks are up if my symptoms are gone and then I'll get tested again to make sure, like, it actually comes back negative. So, yeah, I'm going to finish watching these booktube videos, but hopefully I'll get to reading soon. Okay, it is about 11 o'clock at night. I have not stayed up this late in so long, uh, but I actually finished The Nature of Witches. Um, by Rachel Griffin. I took the dust jacket off because this is gorgeous. Anyway, so I finished this. Um, I had about 150 pages left and I liked it. I mean, I'm kind of thinking four stars, maybe 3.5, uh, but Goodreads is going to be four stars um, just because there were some, well, it's a very atmospheric book and for that purpose, I really liked it. I really liked how the whole environmental theme going through it and like the character's emotions. I just had a little bit of trouble with a little bit of character continuity um, and kind of a big thing at the end 
uh, I felt like they were leading up to this big event that was very important for people to be in a certain spot or away from a certain spot. I'm trying to not spoil it, by the way. Um, and it didn't seem like they were. And I was just I was just confused at how the ending worked out a little bit. I think it could have been a little better explained. Uh, but otherwise, it's just a really pretty atmospheric book adding magic to the environment and just reminding us how we are destroying the planet. I don't think it was perfect, but I definitely, I love the cat. Nox is my favorite, but the cat will almost always be my favorite character. Um, but otherwise, yeah, like I think my few issues with it aren't really enough to knock it down an entire star, but I also just don't feel like it was enough to be five stars just with how the plot was because it, it had a very minimal plot. It was really just the idea of we have this ever witch who is the only one like herself and she doesn't know how to handle her magic and the entire book is just her training and learning to use her magic. There are a few events here and there but by all accounts, it's really just extensions for her training, and I felt like there really wasn't much of an impact. Like, obviously, there was for the character, but I just feel like plot-wise, there it just wasn't much of a plot. Um, but I still felt like it read pretty good. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't fast-paced at all, but it didn't feel too slow, but I think that's because I did like the characters. But yeah, so I don't think it was quite enough to be like a five star read, but I still very much enjoyed it. I love a good atmospheric read, um, and it's it's great for this time of year when the seasons are changing, because um, you go through over a year of this, and you talk about all the seasons. So yeah, it's going to rest somewhere between like a 3.5, 4 star uh, read. So I finished one book on this reading vlog already and it's only been a couple of hours but I was also already in that book. So because it's 11 o'clock um, I, I just realized it's we're about an hour away from starting the Reindeer Readathon on December 1st. This is gonna it's obviously still gonna be my COVID reading vlog but it's gonna kind of turn into the first week or so of Reindeer Readathon vlog as well. I wasn't planning on vlogging the entire month of December, but I was thinking about vlogging for a follow a lathon. Um, but yeah, we'll see, because I still might be in quarantine for the start of that. Who knows? So we're just gonna keep going with this, and I'm just gonna keep reading as long as I have energy. I am debating if I want to pick up a book that I had started earlier in like October um, and didn't finish and if I wanted to read that for the last hour kind of maybe before I went to bed because I'm not gonna start the readathon early but I don't want to start a new book especially when I have quite a few already started that I need to finish so I think I'm gonna pick up how we fall apart I'm like I don't know if I'm even 50 pages in to that one yet but I think that's going to be the next one that I'm going to try and finish, even though I only have like an hour left. And once that hour hits, if, if I am still awake, I'm going to switch over to the Reindeer Readathon. So just to pass the time, um, just because I have enough energy that I don't want to just sit here and listen to my audiobook, I'm good. But yeah, that is my update. I, depending on how I feel, I might update you again tonight, but it's more likely that I will update you tomorrow when I don't feel terrible, whenever that may be, if at all. See, this is going to be a fun, like, chaotic, messy, scattered vlog because I just never know how I'm going to feel at any given moment. So, I'll see you next when I see you next. Hello. It is the next day, which I believe is Wednesday, uh, a little after 1 o'clock. So Brennan has gone to our dining room table to take his online class. That poor guy, he has exams in two weeks. And he's stuck with COVID with me. So anyway, but that's not the point. Also, yes, I will probably be in like the same clothing 
almost every day probably because I'm, I'm sick. I'm not going to be changing too much. I just I want to be comfortable. So no judgment there. As you can probably tell, I have energy again today and I think my symptoms are kind of calming down a little bit, which is really exciting. Um, but we're still only a few days into our quarantine. So anyway, it is Wednesday, December 1st, which means the Reindeer Readathon has started. And so I, the first book that I'm going to read with that is Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shannon McGuire. This is my Dasher prompt. Uh, this is 187 pages, so I think it kind of qualifies as a novella just because it's so short. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and dash right through this quick a minute. Yep. It's been a while since I read the first one, but I also know that it's kind of more of a companion novel. We're following characters from the first one on their own plot line, so I don't think you have to read Every Heart of Doorway in order to understand this, but yeah. So gonna go ahead and get started reading this. It is December 2 and it is almost 10 o'clock at night. I didn't film anything today, but I did get a lot of reading done today. So my symptoms are the best they've ever been. My energy is returning. I cannot say the same for my husband, but <laughs> we'll survive hopefully. Anyway, so the reading update. I... Mm, one second. So I did start Down Among the Sticks and Bones. I am on page 83. Um, so I've got about 100 pages left in it. I didn't finish it yesterday because I started reading it and then we realized, ooh, we should watch Hawkeye. So we watched the first three episodes of Hawkeye. Then we, pop cop we popped some popcorn, realized we need to watch something when we eat popcorn because it's popcorn. So then we ended up just watching like a bunch of Bones episodes and going to bed last night. So I may or may not finish it tonight. I will definitely finish it by tomorrow. I am enjoying this. I'm loving the writing for it and all the background that we're getting on Jack and Jill. So it's not just like them going into their portal world, but also like seeing who their parents are, what led them to the decision of having kids, and what that experience has been like for them so we can really truly know what their background is and where they're coming from so we can fully understand why the world is the one that they got. So it's very interesting, the part I'm at, they just got into their world and are kind of trying to figure out what's going on, they're still kind of trying to get back home. Um, I think it's going to be interesting that there's a hundred pages left, but they just got into their world. I'm very curious to see how quickly or why within a hundred pages they're able to turn around from wanting to go home to being attached to this world and discovering kind of who they are and each other and their relationship with each other within a hundred pages. So I'm, I'm excited for that. I fear it might be a little short, but I also don't know if it's going to be like the perfect length. So. I am excited to read it. I feel very immersed in it when I read it, which I love. The reason I haven't read it much today is because I've been doing a lot of audiobook listening. Um, I had initially decided that I wasn't going to film uh, my December bullet journal video because, for obvious reasons of not having energy and not being able to uh, have my usual filming set up. Um, but I decided today after watching 
someone else's bullet journal. Shout out to Shelby on the channel, Grace with Books. Um, I watched her bullet journal video and I was like, nah, I still want at least a bullet journal for this month. So I have been creating my bullet journal spread and initially I was like, I'm going to keep it plain, simple, you know, maybe not even a theme, just kind of just, you know, have the spreads there so I can track everything as normal. And then I kind of started to expand upon it. So I might do a quick flip through video tomorrow when I finish it. Um, so it won't be like a regular video, but it'll still be something to share, uh, which would be kind of exciting to still have a video go up even during this time. But, um, but because of that, I've been doing a lot of audiobook listening and the audiobook I was listening to was called The Prisoner's Wife by Maggie Brooks. This is a historical fiction uh, following um, a couple in World War II. He is a uh, English soldier who had been captured and she was a Czech farm girl. He was uh, assigned to work on her farm and then they got to know each other, they fell in love, they got secretly married, and they ran away together. So that's kind of uh, the book that I read, it was a 13 hour audiobook. I had listened to the first three hours before December started, so I wasn't including it in uh, the Reindeer Readathon because for that readathon you have to start the book in December. Um, but I had wanted to finish it before December happened. Obviously, that didn't happen, but I did finish it today. All this long windedness to say, I did actually finish listening to uh, The Prisoner's Wife though. I listened to the last 10 hours today, uh, but I listened to it on two times speed, so it was more like five hours for me. Um, and I enjoyed it. I think at the moment it's a 4.5 star, uh, just because I'm still letting my emotions settle down so I can sit down and think, okay, this is what I think it should actually be rated for these reasons. But I was very happy that I, I did manage to finish that. And I kind of just can't believe I haven't finished Dumb Among the Sticks and Bones. But, uh, also, I did start my next audiobook, which is Unravel the Desk by Elizabeth Lim. And this is for the Reindeer Readathon. Let me look up what prompt it is. Hold, please. So, uh, this is for the prompt Dancer, read a book by your favorite author, Elizabeth Lim is one of my favorite authors. I, I had only read Spin the Dawn and I think I had read one of her Disney Twisted Tales books, but she is definitely one of my favorite authors. I've been so excited. So I'm finally reading Unravel the Dusk, finally. Um, so I'm, I'm working on listening to that as I'm finishing up my bullet journal. So I don't know if tonight I'll read more Down Among the Sticks and Bones um, or if I'm just gonna sit here and listen to my audiobook as I finish my bullet journal, but that's the plan. I am finally completely reading things within the readathon though, and I am very happy about that. Uh, all of my audiobooks are due within two weeks, and I believe I have four audiobooks. I'm going to do my best to kind of focus my attention on the audiobooks for that reason, because I want to listen to them all as they are all for the readathon. And they are all books that I do not own. So once I lose the audiobooks, they're gone. So I'm gonna try. And it, it's difficult though because I'm not going anywhere. I, I always listen to audiobooks when I am like driving somewhere or more mostly when I am cleaning or walking or doing something. But because I'm quarantining in our bedroom, I am not cleaning or walking or going anywhere, so it's. I've been trying to figure out how I'm gonna listen to hours upon hours upon hours of audiobooks without just sitting and listening. Because if I just sit and listen, I'm gonna zone out, I'm gonna miss parts, I might even fall asleep. So that's why it's been really nice to do this bullet journal um, so that my hands have something to do while I am listening. I'm also trying to focus on reading the non-Christmassy- okay, none of my physical books are very Christmassy except for one by one and that's not even Christmassy, that's just winter and it's thriller. Uh, but a lot of my audiobooks are Christmassy. So I'm also just like balancing the excitement of reading a Christmas book and like the 
not lack of excitement, but kind of lack of excitement of none of my physical reads are Christmassy, <laughs> except for one, but I can't read it yet because I'm waiting for the fall -la, -la, la thon for it, so yeah, sorry, kind of a long update, but I mean, it's it's been two days and I finished a book and I'm starting two more, so. Good morning. So it is the morning of December 3rd and it is almost 11 o'clock and we just woke up. We've been sleeping in later and later every day and I think that's because we're actually sleeping. We slept in pretty late today but I, I woke up this morning and I realized that I listened to quite a bit of Unravel the Dusk. I listened to the first four and a half hours. I'm enjoying it. It's it's kind of getting a lot more on the political side, which makes sense for the world, but I'm not a big political person, so I'm hoping that we get back into the mythical soon, and we are start we are still having mythical issues and whatnot, so I don't want to spoil this book for anyone who hasn't read Spin the Dawn and wants to, um, but the second book is looking good so far as well. I'm going to finish doing my bullet journal and see if I can't film just a short little flip through and small explanation for it today um, but I can listen to my audiobook while I'm doing that and then I want to finish Down Among the Sticks of Bones and then I want to finish the audiobook and those are my goals for today is to finish these two books um, and yeah so there's no reason for me not to do so. After all, I am just sitting in bed all day. But I also know that my habit so far has been to start off the day with booktube and that can be, that can take a large chunk of my day as well uh, as I am catching up on videos. So we'll see. Hello, so it's almost midnight uh, from Friday, December 3rd, and I have made significant progress, but not in what I said I would. So I actually finished listening to Unravel the Dusk by Elizabeth Lim. I managed to sit down, listen to the entire 12 and a half hour audiobook starting yesterday ending today my mind is blown i can't believe i was able to do it but i i just did a lot of like work in my bullet journal and a lot of planning for videos so i basically figured out that in order for me to do all of the videos that i want to that i wanted to do for december i'm going to be putting up four videos a week which sounds insane because it is insane but you know I'm excited and I and I love doing this so it's probably gonna happen um, but so yeah doing all of this work has allowed me to listen to the entirety of Unravel the Desk and I think I'm giving it a 4 or a 4.5 out of 5 stars uh, I rated Spin the Dawn 5 stars because I absolutely loved it I thought it was wonderful and honestly I have very similar feelings with Unravel the Desk. I didn't give it a five star read though because, because of personal preference. Not because the book itself was bad or lacking something. I just think for me it was just slightly too political and I liked all the elements it had but at the same time I feel like because we had so many elements, you know, some were done better than others. But I still loved it, like 4.5 stars. I still very much love this book. I thought it wrapped everything up pretty nicely. I had another one of those moments where there were four hours left in the audiobook, but a major event just happened, so I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, which kind of mirrored the first book, but not quite in the same way that I liked. Anyway, the writing, absolutely beautiful. I love the writing. I loved it in the first book. This is why I love Elizabeth Lim because I just, I love the beauty of her writing and the symbolism, symbolism and the art 
the artistry both in the symbolism, the writing itself, and just everything. Like, she, oh, it was just absolutely gorgeous. Everything was. The dresses from the first book were, they weren't ignored or dropped. They still had prominent meaning and were still used and talked about in the second book so it wasn't just like a weird transition from like book one to book two as a lot of other duologies have like it really did feel like a continuation of the story and I it made me very happy <laughs> um so like I said the political aspect wasn't so much my thing um but I still think it was handled pretty well and obviously it was very important in the world um but yeah. And then I loved Maya's transformation. I won't say more than that because I don't want to spoil the first book for those who haven't read it, but I love the things that our characters go through and their growth. Like, I'll just say, oh my word, that ending? Oh. That all being said, I did not read any more of Down Among the Sticks and Stones, which is stupid because there's only a hundred pages left and I love the story. I think, I think what, what's happening is I don't want the story to end because I, again, I'm enjoying the writing a lot and I love these characters. So I think, you know, if I finish it, then I have to, I have to be done for a while until I can get my hands on the next book because I don't have it. So I think that's why I'm not reading this, but I am still very much in an energetic and productive mood. Like I am a night owl by nature. So getting up at four in the morning to go to work it's been hard <laughs> but because I am having that time to become a night owl again I'm thinking instead of reading Down Among the Sticks and Bones I might actually pick up Spy's Family Volume 4 um, this was my five star prediction for the Reindeer Readathon uh, I can fly through this tonight no problem it's a manga so it would probably take me like 20-30 minutes to read um, so just so then that way I get some physical reading done because I always try and physically read before bed. It's kind of hoping to be a little further along in my physical reading, but that's because I've been concentrating on so much on being able to listen to my audiobooks, which is a good thing. I also found audiobooks for um, almost everything that I'm physically reading that is more than 200 pages. How many, how many pages is Hunt of the Grimalkin? Okay, it's like 200 and... It's like 218 pages. So, everything that's over 250, so like, one by one, other side of perfect. I have audiobooks for both of these. Royal Holiday, I'm on hold for the audiobook for it at the library. Um, so... I should be able to like fly through these which would be pretty cool. Also mentioned I did actually start my next audiobook. I'm only like half an hour into it so it's not like I've made significant progress but I started reading In Holidays by Christina Lauren. This fulfills the prompt of a book with red or green on the cover. It is a green cover so and I'm excited because I'm starting my first holiday read of the season um but yeah so I should mention that. finished reading Down Among the Six and Bones by Shauna McGuire. Before I get into this, I'm just going to mention that I couldn't remember if I had read volume three of Spy X Family, and so I looked and I haven't read volume three, and I don't have it. I only have volume four, so <laughs> sad substitution. So this was my five star prediction. I'm going to sub it out for Silver Spoon volume one. I'm borrowing this from a friend. Uh, manga for me is either always going to be a five star prediction or it's going to go unrated. Uh, just, or at least right now, just because I'm still very new to the genre. I've only read two manga series and I haven't finished either of them yet. Um, so this will be starting my third one. Um, so I'm predicting it will be a five star just because I'm still in that glow of like new genre 
excitement. I know that my husband loves the anime and and the manga for this, so this is my new five-star prediction. I'm subbing it out for Spy X Family. I really want to get the third volume so I can keep reading this though. But, you know, what can I do? It's out of stock. I'm waiting it for it to come back in stock and my order will hopefully get here eventually because I really don't want to have to buy it from Barnes & Noble to like actually get it because I don't want to pay for it twice but we all know that wouldn't be the first time that that's happened to me although this is through a different website so Silver Spoon uh, by Hiromu Arakawa and this I know has to deal with like farming and food and possibly cooking it's a slice of life type so nothing fantastical or magical but just like city boy learns how to not be a city boy i believe so i'm excited because it would 100 percent be me i grew up in the suburbs and i want to start a homestead with my husband <laughs> in the next couple of years so i get the feeling that this is about to be really relatable for me anyway so this is going to be the next thing that i start reading but <laughs> down among the six and bones this did not disappoint this truly delivered Oh my gosh, it got so dark and I loved it. I thrived off of how dark it was. Um, I love the writing style of this. It was absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Um, however, as we got to the ending and I was like really like speeding up my reading, I had a hard time with the writing style because it's not meant to be read quickly. It is something to like take your time and really pay attention to every sentence and word and detail that is used. Uh, but when I'm at the end of the book, I just I just want to get to the end of the story, and I just want to see what happened. I don't need your long explanations on how the girls came to love, or I don't need your paragraphs about how good and obedient they were, um, which those were both very strong themes in this book, and I thought that they were very cool, but they kind of got a little repetitive. And I'm saying that, and this is a novella, like this is a short book, and something was repetitive. So I rated this 5 out of 5 stars. Uh, because I loved it. I really want to go back and read the first one and see how the girls' relationship in this has even transformed since the, fir like, leading into the first one, because this takes place before the first book does. But I know that the third book, Beneath the Sugar Sky, um, is back at the Academy, so I don't know if we'll see these characters, but that would be pretty cool. I, I definitely love them. I love who they grew to be. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It was, it was just so interesting. I loved everything about it except, like I said, there were a few moments where I felt like elements or ideas were kind of repeated so much that it was much more telling versus showing of those ideas. Um, but it wasn't the worst thing in the world. I definitely think the spooky atmosphere and <laughs> just the overall plot and characters made up for it and made this a five-star read. So I'm very happy. I'm excited for the next one. Hello. It's a location change! Yay! So basically it is Sunday. It is 11 o'clock at night. Um, I haven't done any reading. I wanted to finish the manga today, but that might not happen. I'm enjoying it though. I'm about halfway through and I'm loving it. I can relate to the main character as like a city person who is interested in agriculture, but has no background in it. So I'm, I love the manga. I just wish I could finish it. I also made no progress with audiobooks. Basically, what I did today was film. I should probably explain why I'm not in the room. So, our apartment mate, so we are in a two-bedroom, the person who lives in the other bedroom, our friend, has decided to go live in a hotel while we are finishing up our COVID quarantine. We are now free to roam the apartment as we so choose, because <laughs> they're not here. Um, so we have been able to spend the day outside of our room. We still can't obviously leave the apartment because COVID, but yeah. And because I had so much energy today, I filmed like six, five or six videos, uh, for pre-filming for when I'm home in Michigan. Uh, tomorrow I'm hoping to film like eight and then I should only have like two more videos to film after that. Theoretically, I can have all of the filming done before the quarantine ends because when quarantine ends, if we test negative and I have to go back to work, I'm just not going to be home while there's sunlight, which is going to make it hard to film. So, yeah. 
I didn't read anything, but I did film a lot. And hopefully tomorrow I can do some reading. Uh, I know I'm gonna have even more videos to film tomorrow, but we shall see. But yeah, I'm really tired and I think I ate too much chicken, so I'm probably gonna go to bed, but probably no reading update, so. I will see you tomorrow on Monday. It is December 7 now. I didn't update for a day or so because, so, it's Tuesday. And basically what happened, also I have a Christmas fire going on on the TV, so that's the crackling noise. But basically on Sunday I spent the whole day filming. And then on Monday, I, so I didn't read anything on Sunday, and then I meant to spend all of Monday filming, but I didn't have enough room on my phone or my computer to store the videos. So I did a bunch of reading that day. The thing is, so today is Tuesday, so I, Tuesday was the day that we had our COVID tests. So it's past 10 days for me. So my test result came back negative. Woohoo! I don't have COVID anymore. Uh, however, my husband, Brennan, he started showing his symptoms last Tuesday, so his test actually came back positive, but he didn't get tested when he started showing symptoms, because it was pretty obvious. So we realized he's only seven days into his quarantine, um, but because we still live together, and there is the small likelihood of me being reinfected, we are both quarantining until we both are negative. So in three days when it's the end of his quarantine, we have a take home test because, you know, if I don't develop symptoms, I'm pretty sure we'll be negative. Um, so if he does that test and he is negative, then hopefully he can do his last day of school. Friday is his last day of school and that's the end of his 10 days. So we're really hoping he can go to the last day of classes before exams start. Um, so theoretically, my COVID reading vlog should be done, but it's not because we're still quarantining for three more days. I'm still not going to go anywhere for three more days just to be safe. We take this very seriously, so, but there were reindeer readathon reading sprints tonight and I did them. So we read for like an hour and a half. I started reading Hunt of the Grimalkin by Danny Swanson. I'm about a third of the way through. I'm like 85 pages in and it's like 218 pages. So I made some good progress. I'm probably going to try and read more of this tonight theoretically. I would love to finish this tonight, but we shall see. I definitely have thoughts about it, both positive and constructive criticism. But, yeah, I'll kind of give all of my thoughts near the end of it. This is the start of a trilogy, and there's also a companion novel to the trilogy, which you don't have to have read the trilogy to read the companion novel, but yeah, it exists, and I, luckily, I own the entire trilogy plus the companion novel, so while those are not books on my TBR for December or Rainy Readathon or this year or anything, uh, but I do still have them, which hopefully means I will get to them soon. But, it also just made me realize that I am starting another series, and hopefully on Friday or Saturday I will be filming my uh, video about all the series that I have yet to finish, so subscribe so that you can see that video when it comes out, but I'm just like, oof. Oof. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to reading now. It's Friday. I didn't update you yesterday because, again, I was very busy and focused on... Uh, filming videos and editing videos. Yes, I know my hair's a mess. Uh, so I didn't do a lot of reading yesterday because I was preparing videos because we decided that we're actually going to leave tomorrow because we tested negative today. Woohoo! Woohoo! So, yes, I tested negative on Tuesday, but Brennan tested negative this morning and we both feel perfectly fine. So, we're very happy that we are officially done with COVID. Well, like us being sick, COVID is still an issue. Uh, and we can be done with our quarantine, which means it is finally the end of this quarantine vlog, which was, you know, just under two weeks. You know, it was 10 days. So yeah, I read a total of six books, which is pretty cool because let's see, 
I finished this book. I'm pretty sure I told you that I did, but I'm not sure if I told you how much I loved it. Uh, I really love this. Um, I, I very much relate to the main character because he is a city boy who went to an agricultural high school just for something new and different. So everyone else there is like kind of coming from like a family farm background. Everyone knows what they want to do. Everyone has a lot of hands-on experience. Except our main character, who knows, like, he's he's studied and he's a good student, but he has zero hands-on experience and he doesn't really know that much about the dairy program, which is what he's in, um, or agriculture in general. And I relate to that because I grew up in the suburbs, but I, my husband and I, Brian and I want to start a homestead when we buy a house, hopefully in like a year and a half-ish, maybe, please, hopefully. Um, so I'm gonna be in like the same shoes and I, I love his reactions to everything. Um, yeah, I enjoyed this more than I thought I would just because, yeah, I just wasn't sure about it, but I really did enjoy this. And then I also, uh, finished, or I sat down and did a reading sprint and then when the reading sprints ended, I finished... The, the book that I had chosen, which was this one, The Hunt of the Grimalkin by Danny Swanson. It's the first in the trilogy. Yeah, I rated it as 3 out of 5 stars. I think it was an averagely good book. Uh, reading it was very interesting. It felt very episodic or like you're playing a video game because you we would come across like this new area. There would be a small issue, we would solve it, and then we would move on. Uh, like, I felt like nothing really went, like, super deep, but there was a lot of exploration, a lot of figuring things out, a lot of, like, training montage, and almost like you're leveling up. Um, so, like, it wasn't exactly my cup of tea, and I had, there were some grammatical issues in here, um, and I'm still kind of getting used to the main character. I felt like he was a little inconsistent, but I have been told that the books do get better as they go on and so I'm excited to pick up the next one anyway. I love the idea behind it, um, but I just, yeah, if, if the next books are better, I'm going to be very happy. So yeah, I, I finished reading, let's see, well I finished reading, I finished reading The Prisoner's Wife, I liked that one. I finished reading Unravel the Dusk, loved that one. Down Among the Sticks and Bones, I liked that one a lot as well. Silver Spoon, which I just talked about. Um, Hunt of the Grimalkin. And I also finished listening to In Holidays by Christina Lauren. I think that one is pretty good. It's kind of in that 3.5, kind of 4 star range. I think it might just be on 3 stars on Goodreads, but like a 3.5. Just because, it's a, so it's a Groundhog's Day type story, but I feel like we go back in time not very many times, and they were really close together, but once we started going on a timeline, she just kind of went right through it, and it was just like, okay. But I admire what the story said, and the Christmas vibes were definitely there, and I loved them, so. I'm also almost done with 10 blind dates. I expect to finish that today, but it's not going to be part of this vlog, just because we tested negative, so our quarantine is over. So it's the end of the vlog, but I am almost done with 10 blind dates. So I have four more videos to film today, and then I'm going to try and edit as much as possible. And those are kind of my goals for today. And Haku will be coming home with us. We're really excited for my family to meet Haku, our tortoise. So it's going to be a good time. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching this reading vlog. Uh, it was very impromptu, so I didn't plan a lot of things but if you liked it still give it a thumbs up otherwise feel free to subscribe down below i am posting four videos every week this december but normally i post on sundays and wednesdays so hit the bell to be notified when those go up otherwise comment down below what you're reading if you have any christmasy reads that you are picking up um but otherwise yeah i also have bookish social medias that you can follow me on we can be friends we can give each other recommendations all that fun stuff uh, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching again, and until I see you in the next video, I wish you happy reading.